Why do we love a bit of heat in our food? Could it be the endorphin rush we get when we eat a hot chili? Or simply the internal warmth that floods our bodies? In this episode, I'll be drawing inspiration from Szechuan and Cantonese cuisines, both styles that I trained in as a young chef in my dad's restaurant. We're going to be using fermented chili bean paste, my dad's favorite, the fiery hot bird's eye chili, and we'll also be pulling in some subtle heat from the garlic and ginger. So, are we agreed? Spice is nice. Here are my top three spicy dishes. Let's fire it up with my Szechuan style king prawns from Southwest China, then onto a classic Indo-Chinese satay chicken skewers, and finishing off with everyone's favorite, my shredded crispy chili beef, sweet and spicy. So let's start off with Szechuan king prawns. This dish can be found on Chinese takeaway and restaurant menus everywhere. So this recipe, my dad loves, purely because it's got this ingredient in. Now this is fermented soya beans, or a soya chili bean paste. And I'd say it takes a bit of getting used to, but that's not actually true, because this dish used to sell really well in dad's restaurant. Um, but yeah, if you've never used it before, it does smell quite funky, but it's really nice. Um, there's quite a lot of ingredients in this one, but it is, an amazing dish when it comes together. And um, you have to make sure that all of these vegetables are chopped really fine because we're gonna put the star ingredient in, which are my deveined king prawns, and we don't wanna upstage these. So we'll get the veggies chopped nice and fine. My wok is on already. And within a minute or two, we should be ready to wok and roll. <laughs> he says, that was really cheesy. So my peppers, nice and fine. I'm gonna grab an onion and take the top off and the bottom. We never did this in the restaurant actually. We'd always take the tops off and we'd always leave the bottoms on because you weren't always gonna chop them all in one go. But as we are chopping these straight away, I'll just take the bottoms off as well. Take out this outer layer. Sometimes you have to take off the first two layers because the second layer is quite papery as well. And you don't want that papery texture in the mouth. So I'll take off the first two. Let's just get rid of this extra skin of the onion. And it does help if you've got a really sharp knife because it make, does make chopping a lot easier. So even though there are a lot of ingredients in this dish, we have to work quickly when we start cooking because we wanna make sure that the vegetables retain that crunch. Um, best way of chopping a carrot, if I've not shown you before, is we're gonna take off the bottom just to give it a bit of a flat surface to work on. In fact, I'll chop this in half just to make it a bit easier. And then we're gonna chop some slices and then those slices into a julienne. And then we'll chop those juliennes into little dices as well. Right, my veggies done. That can go over here out the way. Wok's hot already. We'll get a squidge of oil in. Now in the restaurant, we'd always put in the garlic and ginger first. Can't do that at home um, because there's a tendency to burn. So I'll get the onion in first. And as soon as my onion is in, I'll get in my pre-chopped garlic, and there's just one garlic clove, chopped nice and fine. That, and I have a piece of ginger which is grated. You can chop it. And there are those background Cantonese flavors that I talk about quite a lot. Remember, the Chinese takeaway dishes that we eat at home are predominantly Cantonese. With the mass migration, a lot of the Chinese came over from Hong Kong, and uh, they, with that, they bought the Cantonese dishes that we all know and love now. I'll get my peppers in. And my carrots.
Now this is going to take 20-30 seconds just to soften. Now, in go the star ingredients. So king prawns into the middle. And as they're cooking there, I'm going to add in some of my drives. So a little tiny pinch of salt. You don't need a lot in this dish because there's so much other stuff going in. A little bit of sugar to balance these flavors and to bring the sweetness of the king prawn out. Tiny pinch of white pepper for that background heat we talk about. And you can see already my king prawns, even though they've just been sitting in the pan are nearly cooked already. So to this, I'm gonna add my water chestnuts, which have just been diced. And now in for my wets. So hoisin sauce is gonna give it that background cinnamony, star anise flavor, okay? And the five spice. So, you know, it's, it's hoisin sauce. It's got that, you know, unique Chinese flavor. Then we need a little bit of tartness. That's gonna come from the tomato ketchup. So in goes a smidge of tomato ketchup and dad's favorite ingredients, which is the fermented chili bean paste. I'm gonna put two good wallops of chili bean paste in. Okay, we need a tiny little wisp of stock. Now the stock really is there to, you know, when you serve this dish, you want some sauce. So that stock is just gonna give me that. And the flavor and the smell, well, to say the flavor, but I mean, I can literally taste it, it's that strong. But the smell is quite unique. And you'll know that you're cooking Szechuan King prawns after this. Now we need to thicken. So this is just corn flour and water mixed together and I'm just going to use this as my thickening agent and I'm just going to add in a little stir of corn flour now the very last couple of things rice wine I didn't put this in too early because I want that fermented wine taste and there's a good tablespoon going in so I don't want to cook out all of that alcohol Heat off, a little splash of sesame oil. And I have this beautiful earthenware serving bowl. I'm just gonna pour this in. And I'm gonna finish that off with a little flourish of spring onions. And there we have it, my Szechuan King prawns, one of my dad's favorites. You can eat this with rice, chips, a jacket potato, or even wedged in between two slices of bread. It doesn't really matter, it goes with everything. Now for my satay chicken skewers, one of those Saturday nights stumbling home from the pub, finger food favorites. Satay is believed to have originated in Java, but has since spread across the world and can now be found in takeaways, restaurants, and playing a huge part in the ever popular and growing street food scene. I have some chicken tenders. So these are the pieces of the chicken that are just underneath the breast. I'm gonna actually use a spoon rather than mucking my fingers. I'm gonna pop these into my bowl. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that I'm gonna marinate the chicken. So I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, a tiny pinch of white pepper, and a squirt of sesame oil. Now sesame oil, we either use it for seasoning the dish at the end or for marinating. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir, ensuring that all of the ingredients are well combined. And I'm gonna set this to one side for about two hours. Um, and what will happen is it just 
help tenderize the chicken and make it a bit more juicy when we're eating. And why that is there, marinating, we'll crack on with our sauce. On goes my pan and I've got some water, followed by a splash of dark soy sauce. I'm gonna cheat ever so slightly with this one. I'm gonna put some ready-made satay sauce in, but you don't have to use this. The recipe works just as well without it. Some brown sugar. Some garlic clove. Um, again, I've just chopped this nice and fine. And when it comes up to the boil, it'll just soften. And if you're gonna use peanut butter, I think you should always use the crunchy. So some crunchy peanut butter. And in that goes. Let's bring this up to the boil and we'll finish it off just with a squidge of lime, just to add that acidity and to make it all lovely and scrummy and yummy and satay -y. and you'll see what I'm talking about when you try it. So the peanut butter will dissolve once we do come up to the boil. But at the moment, we've got big clumps in here. But just be patient, keep on stirring, and slowly, slowly, the mixture will come together. Satay sauce is now up to the boil. Everything is mixed in together. The garlic is softened. I'm gonna switch off the heat. I'm gonna grab, and it literally, you only need a little tiny squirt of lime juice. Give that a quick mix. Grab myself a spoon. Let's just give this a quick try. That's fantastic. It's spicy, it's sweet, it's nutty. That umami from the soy sauce is coming through. It's really, really nice. Okay, sauce is made. I'll pop this onto one side. I'm just gonna give everything a quick wipe down. And I'm gonna go and put my feet up just for an hour while my chicken is marinating. Sorted. Right then, chicken's had two hours. You can see it's looking lovely. It smells nutty because of that sesame oil. I'm gonna pop my glove on. Now, if you've got metal skewers, use those. I'm gonna use wooden skewers. Um, I have pre-soaked these. And I'm gonna take one of these chicken tenders. And I'm just gonna skewer it onto my wooden stake. Now I think five is a good size portion but by all means, they taste so good. You can do as many as you want. You could also do these, in, you could do a batch of these. So you can make a huge batch, pop them in the fridge, and then just pop them in the oven when you're ready to eat. Just two more to go. And the last one, Now I'm going to get my satay sauce. I'm just going to, first of all, just coat each of the pieces with this satay. And then I'll just make sure that they're well and truly covered. And there we have it. Now I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees, 190 degrees. They're only gonna take about 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna pop these in. Another quick wipe down and then we can serve.
Mm. Oh yeah, they smell so good. One for me, two for me, three for me, yeah, four for me, and number five. Let me get rid of this. Now what? Oh, you know what? Oh, the beer, that's what I need. After all, this is a Saturday night stumbling home from the pub, finger food. Hmm. Let's give this a good coating of satay sauce that we saved from dressing it. Good squeeze of lime. A mouthful of chicken, and I'm looking forward to this. And a swiggle beer. And there we have it, satay chicken skewers. You can serve this as a starter or part of a main meal or even as a movie night snack. What more do you want? Saturday night, take me home. And finally, the one, the only, shredded crispy chili beef. This recipe is the one that gets the biggest reactions and the most requests. I think secretly, even non-meaties crave it. And why wouldn't they? It's sticky, it's crunchy, there's heat hidden within the sweet sauce, lavishly wrapped around the velvety fried onions, carrots, and it's a mouth sensation. It's a mouth explosion. So I have a piece of rump steak, which we've just taken the fat off the top of it, or taken the fat layer off the top and chopped it into thin strips. You don't have to be too accurate on this. I mean, we're cooking it and it's home cooking, isn't it? So um, I'm gonna give it a tiny pinch of salt just to help with the seasoning. And I have a whisked egg. I'll probably only use half of this. Now the trick is now is to massage this together. I really wanna try and get the meat to um, soak up the egg and the salt. So I'm gonna give this a really good mix. And I don't know if you can see at the bottom of my bowl, there's no moisture left, there's no egg. And that's, I know now that the meat is taking up all of that egg and there's no wetness there. Okay, so now for the fun part, and it is a little bit messy. So you're gonna take a handful, and this is just corn flour. Um, I think other people have said you can make it with potato starch and so forth. I've never done it that way. We've always, always, use corn flour. And just slowly, slowly, a handful at a time, I'm just gonna start trying to separate these beef pieces. Now I think half more of a handful, that'll be enough. So I'm just gonna turn my oil up ever so slightly now. And if you can see, the beef pieces have separated. So I'm gonna take my beef, bang off the excess, drop it into the wok, laying it away from me, just in case of splashing. Now, why do you think this dish is everyone's favorite? So it's gotta be the crispy coated beef and it stays crispy even when it's in the sauce. You know, the flash fried onions and carrots, which are juicy. And then we've got that sweet, crispy chili beef sauce, which there's honey, there's sugar, there's dark soy sauce, there's vinegar. I mean, what is it there to like? And I'm just gonna clear some of this out of the way to give myself a bit of room to work. And I give my hands a quick rinse off. Now, if you don't have one of these, they're called a wok spider. Uh, and it does make things a lot easier. It just means I can pull out the beef all in one go, pretty much. Now, you can see that the beef is really sizzling away in there. Now, I want to cook out as much moisture as possible. 
So I'm going to keep on frying this until the beef is really crispy and all of those bubbles have near enough dispersed. Now, if you're cooking a dinner party and this is going to be part of one of the dishes that you're going to serve, you can pre-fry this ahead of time. Um, allow it to drain on a wire rack or on kitchen paper and then um, arrange them individually on a uh, baking sheet. And all you've got to do then is just pop them in the oven 10, 15 minutes before you want to serve and they'll be nice and crispy, ready for your guests. So I'm going to give this another 10 seconds and it'll be done. And because that's nearly done, I'm going to start heating my wok. So just while that's warming up now, I can grab my beef out of the oil and I'll switch my heat off. And I just pop this onto my wire rack. And because I have a cork board, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Right then. So we need a splash of oil and we don't need a lot. And that's followed by my ginger and garlic. Now don't worry too much that we don't hear a sizzle straight away. Um, what I don't want to do is burn the garlic at this point, but I want to cook out that rawness. I'm also going to add my spring onion. Now these are the three classic Cantonese flavors. Immediately, I've got that fragrance, that aromatic smell. And now I can add my onion and my carrot. And again, I don't want to overcook these. I want to try and retain some of that crispiness. Actually, and now that my wok or my other wok is out of the way, I'm just going to turn this over just to get a bit more heat in here. For a start, it's okay to start off slowly, but now I can start to speed up this process. I'm just going to make sure all of these vegetables are mixed together. And then we can start adding the sauce ingredients. So we're going to start off with approximately four tablespoons of vinegar. And I say approximately because we can always adjust the taste afterwards. This is followed by some dark soy sauce. This is going to color my dish. And I've got three big lugs in there. Now we don't thicken this sauce. We allow it to reduce and we reduce it by about a third. In goes some sugar. We have some chili flakes for a bit of heat. After all, it is shredded crispy chili beef. And finally, some honey. Now, I need to cook this together and reduce the sauce down so it becomes sticky. Then we can give it a taste, adjust the seasoning. So well, I'm either going to put a little bit more sugar in or a little bit more vinegar. Now, because of the sugar and the honey, you can see that the sauce is already quite thick. But again, I just want to bring this down ever so, ever so slightly. Now, very carefully, because of the sugar, we're just going to give this a quick taste. Try not to burn your mouth at this point. Okay, that can take just a little bit more sugar. And again, cook this to your own taste. So I'm gonna add in about another half a tablespoon. Now another quick taste. There you go, got it. And finally, we're gonna add in our crispy beef and you can hear how crispy it is. In that goes. 
give it a quick toss. Off goes the heat. Um, a little sprinkle of sesame oil. And that will grab my plate, which I have over here. And there we have it guys, my shredded crispy chili beef. What more could you ask for? It's spicy, it's sweet, it's crispy. And it's juicy. Go on, fire up your taste buds with my Szechuan style king prawns, satay chicken skewers, and last but by no means least, my shredded crispy chili beef.